Now look at verse 7. Amen. Let's read verse 7 on 3. 1, 2, 3, go. He says, get what? No, no, no. You got to get, get, you you get something first before you, you can understand. What do you have to get first? He says, get what? Get what? And then you will get what? So understanding comes from wisdom. Now notice here. He says, wisdom is a principal thing. In other words, all of us weren't born with wisdom. Amen. It's something that you have to get. Amen. It's something that you have to gain. It's something that you have to increase in it. It's something that you have to obtain. Amen. It says, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get it. And in order for you to get it, you must apply it over and over. You must apply it in your life. You must apply the word. The word of God. Because the wisdom of God will give you the understanding of the formula of who you are. Amen. He says, with all you getting, get what? Get understanding. Now, you cannot understand the formula of something if you don't have the wisdom of it. Now, wisdom it's the ability to discern the differences. It's the ability to discern the purpose of a thing. Yes, sir. It's the ability to know the right solution to the problem. Yes, sir. We live in a society of problems. Is anybody on the same boat with me? Yeah. Well, some of you are not, not living in this society. You must live in a perfect society. We're living in a society of problems. Anybody living in the same society? Yes. Therefore, we cannot afford to live life without wisdom. Because wisdom will give you the understanding how to live life. Here, in a society of problems. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the applications of the knowledge. You read the word of God, the word of God is a knowledge. The Bible is a book of knowledge. When you apply the book, when you apply the word, it becomes a wisdom. And then when you apply, when, when it becomes a wisdom, it gives you the understanding. Amen. It gives you the understanding while you're going through the same thing over and over again and never see yourself going ahead. It gives you the understanding why you're going around in a circle. You get lost in a circle and you're still going on around in a circle. It gives you the understanding how to get out of it. First Corinthians says, Oh, just and trials are coming unto man, but God provided the way of escape. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Wisdom will give you the understanding to know what to leave, how to leave, what to eat, what to dress, where to go, how to speak. It will give you the understanding. Now go to Romans, would you please? Chapter 1. Amen. I want to encourage you on vision. And what God has called each and every one of us to do. So therefore, whichever church you're going to go to, or whatever church that you're coming from, you are obligated to do the work of the kingdom for you to reach, reach out to souls. Amen. And some of you are uncomfortable to come here because every time we are together, um, keep on hammering down your heart about souls. So you kind of stay away from come once in a while and show up. Because you don't like to be told by the truth. You prefer to go somewhere that nobody can tell you about the will of God. They just do things out of the will of God and you like that because the will of God will actually cause you to qualify. Doing the will of God, you have to qualify. You have to qualify. Jesus trained the disciple in order for them to qualify to do the will. Amen. The Lord sent an angel to send Peter to Cornelius to teach them the word in order for them to qualify to do the work of God. Yes, sir. You have to qualify. 
to do the work. The mercy of God is still in you and upon you. But the favor, say favor. favor. The favor of God is upon the person that is qualified to do the work. Oh, yes. That's why when you hear the scriptures like the Lord says, many were called, but few were chosen. It brings forth the understanding, why am I not chosen? Is it the scripture says to me that God chose me, not me, choosing choose him? No, he chose you. But you have to apply the word so you can turn into wisdom to have the understanding for you to qualify. That's why not everybody was born the same. If somebody tell you that we're all equal, they are idiot and stupid. Amen. If that's the same, all of us are have the same thing. All of us are hero. All of us have the same wisdom. All of us are intellect. All of us are on the same level. But that doesn't make sense. Amen. All of us were born different. But the only thing that will bring you into equip, into uh, equalizer, uh, 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 the only thing that will bring you into a level that brings unity upon the level that everybody can be equal is for you to apply the word. Oh, yeah. We know the disciples didn't go to no college. They didn't go to no school. Amen. They didn't know how to read. That's what the Pharisee and such Jesus says. Amen. Are those the fishermen? They don't know how to read, no right. And they're preaching with miracle. <clears throat> because now they're in the favor of God. They have been trained by the word. So they can be qualified to do the work. Romans also says, how will people know if there's no preacher? And how can people believe if a preacher cannot be sent? See, a lot of people went without sin. They just go. But in order for you to become a doctor, you must go to university and study to be a doctor. In order for you to be a nurse, you have to go to school. In order for you to drive, go get, get your driver's license. In order for you to be a lawyer, you have to go to school to get your degree. Now, I'm not talking about any human, earthly, credentials or degree and diploma. I'm talking about the training of your heart. The training of your attitude, the training of your mindset, the training of your attitude that you have changed because your life is a witness to the life of others. Now watch here. Are you there in the book of Romans? Amen. Chapter 1. Now look at verse 1. Verse 1 it says, Paul, say Paul. Paul. Say it again. Paul. Say it again. Paul. It says Paul or what? Sir. Paul or what? Sir. A servant of whom? I re I like that. I like that. Because he identified his name, which means he defined the house that he lives in. The house that he lives in is Paul. The body is not Paul. The body is Paul. But a new man lives inside. So he identified the body that he lives in. Then he says, the servant of Jesus Christ. Say servant. Servant. Say it again. Servant. Say it again. Servant. Uh, so this is what I want on my, 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 my tombstone when I die. If I die before the rapture. I want to put my name, servant of Jesus Christ. I don't want to put no doctors, no, 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 see pastor, no title. I just want my name, servant of Christ. Now notice here. What the scripture, what the Holy Spirit is speaking for Paul. It says, Paul... A servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle. Call, say call. call. Say it again. Call. In the book of Ephesians, it says a holy vocation. Called to be an apostle, meaning a divine purpose, a divine assignment that was ordained for him to do. Now, maybe you are not there yet. But there's a divine assignment that was purposed for you before you were born. That's why scripture says, all things work together for whom? The good of those who are. Now you have to qualify. You have to love the Lord first in order for all things to work for you. All things work together for the good. For the good, say good. The good of those, say those. Those that what? That what? That what? So loving the Lord is a requirement. 
There's a requirement that you have to do in order for you to qualify. Amen? Watch this. He says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Say separated. separated. Say it again. Separated. Now notice here. Paul was separated. Was separated because of the gospel. We know that this man was sold before he converted to become poor. He was out there killing the believers. Amen. But because of the gospel and bring him to the assignment that was ordained from the beginning for him to call to be an apostle. Yes, sir. So the gospel will separate you from whatever you're going through. Oh, yes, sir. Whatever you're going through right now, the gospel will separate you from it. So you will know the wisdom, the understanding of God's will for your life. Amen. Verse 2 it says, which he had promised afore by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning the Son, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. Seed of whom? David. David, according to the flesh. Yes, sir. And declared to be the Son of God. With what? Power. With what? Power. With what? Power. No, 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 no. Say, do we have anybody here already received the Lord? Amen. Come on, do we have anybody already believing, already received the Lord? Amen. Then, every time we talk about the Lord, we're talking about you. Because anyone that are in Christ is a new one. So everything about Christ is also about you. We are joint heir with Christ. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Now, say power. power. You're not saying power because of Jesus. You're saying power because of Jesus that's in you. Now you have the power. Say power. power. Say it again. Power. So he used the gospel to separate you from your way of thinking so you can have the power over the situation that you live in. You don't have to be poor. Amen. You don't have to be sick for the rest of your life. Amen. You don't have to be confused for the rest of your life. Amen. You don't have to be destroyed for the rest of your life. Just get to the gospel, gain the understanding, will give you the power to separate you from whatever's holding you down. Give the little hand clap somebody. You don't need people's approval. Let me say that again. You do not need people's approval. All you need is to love God. It's to love God. Tell your neighbor. Love God. Love God. Say it again. Love God. All you need is to love God. Now we know from 1 John it says love is not words. But work or deeds in the truth. When you love action, pursue after. If someone said to you that they love you but they never do anything for you, well, that is not love, that's lust. Amen. That's lust. If they say they love you but they are not willing to do anything for you, I want to encourage you, run as fast as you can. Amen. Joseph ran from part of his wife. He knew that he was in danger. Oh, yeah. You also must discern. That's what wisdom is. The ability to discern the differences. Amen. You must discern. The differences in people. Amen. Because some of you. Are fighting a battle that's not even yours. Oh, yes. You're taking on somebody else's trash. Not even yours, but because you are in their presence, they influence you to do what they do. Oh, yeah. We heard a skit, we saw the skit in the little kids. Influence, the law of influential is a powerful thing. Proverbs says if you frame with a thief, you will become one. 
Well, whoever you friend with, what they do, you will inevitably, you will eventually do it. If you friend with a godly people, they, you will become godly. If you friend with a wise, you will become wise and wiser. If you friend with business people, you will become business minded. What well, whomever you associate yourself with, you will become. Because that's where the source of information comes from. It comes through them to get to your mind. And you apply what you see. You apply more what you see than what you hear. Let me say it again. Because some of you have not grown in faith. We know faith comes by hearing and hearing more. So you apply more what you see than what you hear. If you see faith in action, it will empower you to grow more. You've been sitting and hearing the faith over and over and over again, and yet you're still in the same level. You haven't grown. You haven't increased. You haven't multiplied. You haven't been a blessing to nobody but yourself. You haven't moved out from selfish, from selfishness. You haven't made a change in your life. It's still the same level. Reason being, because you're not willing to love God, to empower you to hear and to see the word. In the book of Genesis, the Lord told, he said to Abraham, look upon the south, north, and east. Wherever, whatever you see, whatever you see, you shall have it. Whatever you see, you shall have it. Train your eyes to see godly things. Train, train your ears to hear godly words. Now watch this. It says in the book of Romans, it says, verse 4, And declare to be the Son of God with power. Say power. power. According to the, to the Spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection from the dead. Say resurrection. resurrection. Say it again. Say it again. See, a lot of us thinking that you wait until you die so you can resurrect it. That's the second resurrection. The first resurrection, it takes place right now by you receiving the word. Amen. When you receive the word, then it empower you inside. Peter says, you did not born with a corruptible, but an incorruptible seed of the word that gives birth to you. And inside you resurrect it. So you can be resurrected right there where you're sitting, receiving the word of God. Oh, yeah. Now verse 5 it says, I want you to stay closer with me in verse 5. It says, by whom? By Christ, the Son of God with power. We have received. Say received. received. Say it again. Received what? Received what? Grace. Come on. Received what? Grace. And what? Grace. And what? Now notice here. It says received. Past tense. E-D at the end of the word received. Received. Past tense. We already received. So when you receive Christ, you receive grace and what? And what? That's why we need to grow stronger in the word. Because over and over again, we become familiar with the grace. But you have never looked into the apostleship. But yet, this is what you received. When you receive Christ. Now watch this. Watch this. It says. By whom we have received grace. And apostleship. For what? Obedience. For what? Obedience. For what? Obedience. Again there's a qualification. You cannot receive the apostleship. You cannot receive the grace. If there's no obedience. Again. You see. That there's a qualification. That you have to qualify. And what's the qualification here? Say obedience. obedience. Say it again. Obedience. Say it again. Obedience. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the what? Faith. Obedience to the what? Faith. Obedience to the faith. How, we do, how do we get faith? Hearing the word. Coming by faith. What, how do we get faith? By what? Hearing, Hearing the what? Word. Hearing the what? Word. So it goes back to the word that changed your mind. The word changed your thinking. That when your thinking capacity changes with the word of God, exchange, that's the law of sanctification. Exchange your thoughts with the thoughts of God. The thoughts of God comes inside, and the thoughts of God says, stop doing this, stop doing that. You release that thought, now the thought of God becomes rooted in your mind. And when you apply that thought, the thought of God, then you, you, you actually qualify because now you obey. You obey the word of God that comes 
to give you faith, to empower you to receive or have the understanding of the grace and the apostleship. Lord God, Lord God. Lord God. People watch this again. It says, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Among all nations for his name. Now, now we, notice here, now we can understand why we have to have wisdom so we can get the understanding for us to be separate from the life here on earth. You can be on earth, but you don't have to apply the principle of earth. That is actually contrary to the word of God. You can only apply the principle of earth that lines up with the word of God. Somebody say amen. Because yeah. Hebrew says, obey, all, obey the lands of the law. That's what Hebrew says. Somebody say amen. Yeah. But not all the lands of the law that's are godly. That's right. Amen. Not all. The, land, all the, uh, uh, the laws of the land are not godly. Apostle is not godly. Amen. Homosexual is not godly. Amen. Lesbianism is not godly. Amen. Are you getting this thing? So we only apply laws that is God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We have a new law coming in that, um, that you can give out food, but you're not allowed to, to preach the word. It's already enforced. Now this is where separate the boys, the man from the boys. Where are you standing in? Or whom are you standing on? What do you really believe? Do you have the faith of the Son of God? Or are you going to move by law that renounce your faith? We know from the apostles, they were in prison rejoicing. Peter, he actually, he went to sleep. Paul and Barnabas, they were worshipping in there. Why? Because their faith empowered them. Is that some of the church people they'll be crying? Come on. Trying to, to figure out who to call because he only allowed you to make one phone call. Amen. Who to call? Yes. I called the wrong person, you waste your opportunity. Amen. But Jeremiah says, Call upon the Lord, and you will answer your prayer. Yes. Now watch this. It says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship. For obedience of the faith, or to the faith, among all nations, for his name. Among all nations, for his name. Now, turn with me, would you please? Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Or go to, um, go to Acts, chapter 1. You have to say have. Now look at verse 25. Are we all there in verse 25? Let's read verse 25 on 3. 1, 2, 3, go. All right, let's read it again like um, God's children on 3 with power. 1, 2, 3, go. All right, let's do it one more time, one more time. We can do this thing together. Three, one, two, three, go. That he may take part of this ministry. And what else? And what? And what? And what? And what? From whom? From whom? Now it's very profound for you to stay there. Because Judah was one of the disciples. The office was given to him. The apostleship was his. But since he failed, since he destroyed the opportunity, now the apostleship is given out to somebody else. Are you willing to lose what God has given you?
for not obeying the word of faith? Are you willing to lose what God has given you? Over some pain of friendship or relationship. Amen. Back up to verse 17, would you please? Amen. Verse 17 it says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, it says, Whom? Thank you, pardon. Are you there in verse 17? Yes, sir. For he was numbered Amen. with us and had obtained part of his ministry. He had obtained. <clears throat> now this man purchased a field yes, sir. with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong. Uh -huh. He burst asunder in a mist and all his bowels dashed out. He obtained the office. He obtained the apostleship. But because of his disobedience, well, he disqualified. Well, because of the disqualification, he was so moved. He was so moved with sorrow. He was so moved with anger and hatred towards himself. Then he went and hung himself. Amen. Now, there's a signification of the way he hung himself. I was helping out a church called Harvest Church. Anybody heard of the Harvest Church? And a church called the Rock Church. Um, by profession, I'm an architect. I work together with them to build things that they want for their work. The Harvest Church and the Rock Church, with their people from their office, the art office, we work together for them to build this. I'm not running no church, but I'll bring you my point. Somebody say amen. And then I asked them, what are you doing with this? Structure this blueprint. It says we're doing a play. Anybody watch the uh, um, How's Kate of uh, Kate of Fire, Kate of Frame, or something? Anybody watch that, that, that play? Amen. It's like that, but their their play is about Judah. It's about Judah betraying the Lord, and then he went and hung himself. Now, according to their blueprint. Judah hung himself with his head up. Mm -hmm. But I remember the scripture when I was looking at the blueprint. I said, I said, this is contradicted. This is not scriptural. I said, yeah, we've been doing this for 25 years. I said, the scripture said that Judah went and hung himself upside down, not upwards. Upside down. Since he had himself upside down, the force of gravity burst his stomach and the testines came out. That's the signification of shame because of disobedience. Now watch this. The young man was frozen and he looked at me and I said, read the scripture. It says that he went and hung himself upside down. Because I'm going to go and look into it. I didn't build the blueprint. Too, too, too short. I didn't build the blueprint that he wanted. I said to him, you can go to another company to get this blueprint done. I'm not going to do it. Reason being is because you're giving out the wrong message about the word of my father. Giving out the wrong word. If you want to do it right, follow the scripture. Don't add or subtract. Follow the scripture. After the conversation, the young man received, received correction. Correction is an opportunity for you to gain favor. He received correction so he can go back and talk to 
their board about what we just talk about. And I refuse to do it. Reason being because it's a wrong example. Now I'm asking you, are you willing to leave out the word of God in your life? So you cannot take on somebody else's mistake and show for free your life? Are you willing to challenge the world? That nobody died for you but Jesus. Nobody resurrected from the dead for you but Jesus. Are you willing to challenge the world? That you will not compromise your faith. Because of the grace and the apostleship office that God has given you. You can answer that question to yourself. Again. Verse 17 it says. For he was numbered with us. And had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased. A field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong. He burst asunder in the mist and all his ball cast out. And it was known unto all the dwellers in Jerusalem or at Jerusalem. In so much as that field it's called in their proper tongue or the Hebrew or the Aramaic. Their tongue they call it Asiladama. That is to say, the field of blood. The field of blood. For it is written. We we'll find out this was already written, prophesied from the book of Psalms. For it is written in the book of Psalms that his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. And his piece of brick or his office let another take. Do you want to lose what God has given you? Or you are willing to leave the way that God wants you to lead, So you can fulfill, rejoice, and enjoy what God has given you. Your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard what God has prepared for the life of those that love him. This is the beginning of your walk. This is the beginning of your journey. This is the beginning of the work of God in your life. But you must be willing to allow the Lord. To make a change in your life. Or I can guarantee you. You will be the still same person. This time next year. If you are not willing to make a change now. Let your tomorrow be better than your today. Because today will be your tomorrow's yesterday. Let your tomorrow. Be a day of. Accomplishment, a day that you can rejoice seeing the change in your life, seeing the differences in your life, that you have applied something different than before. How long do you read the word a day? How long do you meditate on the word? Do you worship God the whole day? If it's only 15 minutes of your time that you do that a day, then let tomorrow be 20 or let tomorrow be 16. And the day after, as you grow, and you grow, and you grow, that your life become a worshiper. You qualify for it now. Oh, we just can go to church and look like we are godly, but yet denying the power thereof. Well, we walk around and we look like God's people, but yet deep down inside, you know. You know that you live in defeat. You know. That you live in mystery. You know. That you cannot break out. Of a bondage. That's holding you down. You cannot get rid of. A bondage that's destroying you. You have not conquered. The struggle. That you have been struggling all this time. But when you come to church. You put on a mask. Yes, sir. You put on a smile. Yes, sir. Everything is okay. But as soon as you leave the church, you go back to the same old lifestyle. Are you willing to lose everything because of your disobedience? Or pay more because of your obedience? 
That decision is yours. What are you willing to do? I'm challenging you today. Leave today as your last day. Tomorrow was not promised for you and me. You don't know if you're going to see the sun rise again or not. But let today be your day that you make up your mind and you make your decision. I'm going to spend more time with the word of God. I'm going to speak more positive. I'm going to speak more of the word of God rather than complaining, complaining, negative, come out of my mouth. Aren't you sick of your own self? Oh, yes. I mean, you should record yourself on a tape recorder and see how positive or negative you are. Then when you find out what kind of language you got out of your mouth, then do something about it. Amen. Don't just let another day come by for you to advance your negativity. You gotta check words that come out of your mouth if there are words of edification or word of ten or condemnation. If there are words of, 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 of encouragement that builds your own self up, or words that will destroy your own soul. Or you can go ahead and start blaming people. Blaming the church. It's the G7 ministry. It's the pastor. I don't see his wife comes. My Lord. It's the pastor. I don't save you. My wife don't save you. Jesus saves you. You're here for the word. You're not here for me. You're not here for my wife. If you're here for, for my wife or you're here for, for me, I can tell you, you are in the wrong place. Go where you can receive the word of God so yourself can go to heaven. Nobody will stand for you. Nobody will stand for you. Nobody will stand for you but Jesus himself. You're here for the word of God to edify your soul, to empower you so you can go and apply. Make wise decisions so you won't lose the grace nor lose the apostleship that God has given you. What's the apostleship, Pastor? It is the office that you build. It's the ministry that you build. You build people's lives. Wherever you go, you build. You build. You build. Now let's examine ourselves. See if you are a builder or a destroyer. Do you build people up or you destroy them? You don't need to go to college to find out the results. Are you a destroyer or are you a builder? Jeremiah, the Lord says, I will call you to be a repairer. I will call you to be a restorer. I will call you to build. Are you there building up marriages or destroying marriages? Are you building your own marriage up or are you destroying your own marriage down? Proverbs says a wise woman built up her house. Yes, sir. Only a dumb, stupid woman would break her house down. Yes. Are you building your home up or are you destroying your home? Are you building your marriage up or are you destroying your marriage? Are you building your children up or destroying your children? Which one are you? Which one are you? It's kind of quiet in this Presbyterian church. Which one are you? You don't have to answer that. You answer to the Lord. You don't answer to no man. You answer to the Lord. Show yourself approved unto whom? Oh. Unto God. But you show respect to the people that show forth your fruits. Amen. Are you willing to build everywhere you go, you build people up? The gift of the apostleship, as apostleship was given to you to build. Build your vision group. Build your family. Build people that associate with you. People that become acquainted with you. You have the gift to build them up. Or you're destroying them. Judah. Lost the gift and office. He didn't build nobody up. He destroyed people. So therefore he destroyed himself. Are you going to repeat Judah's mistake? Or are you going to be the number 11 disciple that they have chosen? Are you going to be willing the disciple that they pray to the Lord for? For you to build people up wherever you go? Be on your vision group. Be your people uh, at work. Be your people up at home. Be your people up wherever you go. Are you going to be that person? Wherever you go. And I can guarantee you, you will always find whatever you're looking for. Amen. 
Everywhere you go, whatever you're looking for, you will find it. If you come here to find God, you will find God. If you come here to find a word, you'll find a word. If you come here to find revelation, you'll find revelation. If you come here to find wisdom, you'll find wisdom. Or if you come here to find mistake, you'll also find mistake. Yes, sir. If you come here to find flaws, you'll find flaws. If you come here to find something to blame somebody with, you will find it. Whatever you're looking for, you will find it. And I want to encourage you, look for the kingdom. Give the little hand clap somebody. Look for the kingdom. Look for the kingdom. If you can train your eyes to look for the kingdom, then wherever you go, that's your focus. You see people, you see the kingdom. You build them up. You see places, you see kingdom. You build them up. You see your work, you see kingdom. You don't see it as a paycheck. You see kingdom. Yes, sir. You're there to build them up. You build that company up. You build that, 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 that job up. You build the business up. You build the government up. Wherever you go, you see kingdom. You see the mind, the will, and the purpose of God. That's the kingdom. Give the Lord a hand clap somebody.